here just outside of London at BGFX. Now this company made every white walker, every limb, every dead body since season four on Game of Thrones. We've been allowed to come into their top secret studio, but spoiler alert, if you haven't seen some of the most recent episodes, you might want to look away now. BGFX is run by Emmy winners Sarah and Barry Gower, who have worked in the industry for over 20 years, creating prosthetics for Life of Pi, My Cousin Rachel, and A Cure for Wellness. I was working for various other uh, prosthetic designers, and I was doing little projects for makeup designers, and I was doing things out of had a small studio at home in a, our back garden. I was making bits and pieces. Then we had a call and went for the interview for Game of Thrones, and that's when it all sort of kicks off for us, really. Although we first see the Night King in season four in Bran's vision, it's not until The Door in season six that we see this version performed by actor Vladimir Ferdich. The whole process of making a head like this was probably about maybe three weeks. We had a head cast in Plaster of Paris, and then we would sculpt the whole makeup as one in, uh, in, in a, like a plaster scene. We would make moulds uh, with uh, fiberglass and epoxy resin and then we would cast the silicon appliances from them. So it'd be like basically a big jigsaw piece of uh, various bits and pieces. Every day that the actor films, he needs a brand new set of appliances. This makeup weighs about two to three kilos and takes four hours to apply. But the Night King was originally planned to look a little different. We first sculpted um, a whole chess piece which came down here because I don't think the costume had been decided on at the time as well. And at one point it was going to be topless. Um, so it would have been an awful lot of work probably doing all the body artwork. One of the most recognisable characters is Giant Wun Wun. Actors who play the Giants wear silicon appliances while standing in front of a green screen. And it's um, platinum-based silicon, which I think it's originally um, created for the medical industry. When, when you get it in its raw state, it's completely translucent, it's water clear, and then we pigment it to whatever tone we need. So the softer the piece, the easier it moves on the skin, basically. But what's it like to wear one of these things? That is like putting your hand inside of a plate of jelly. All the pieces are really cold, so putting it on is a bit of a shock, but everything warms up to the skin during the day. How do you take off something like that? <laughs> just like, okay, there we go. You sit there again. <laughs> it's not just white walkers, stone men and giants who need silicone masks. The process is also used on fat suits, double chins and chubby hands. The show is filled with various wounds and infections, like Jura Mormont's grayscale. Remember the scene in season seven where Samuel Tarly removes all the oozing scales one by one? It was effectively a lot of the same makeup but we had a slightly different chest piece, which had a, an underlayer of raw skin. And then we had a patch which was um, pre-applied over the top. But that was all, um, had this sort of integrated blood tubing, sort of led out the bottom of his piece and down his costume. And there was myself and uh, Paul Spiteri behind him with just blood tubes and pumps. And it was kind of on action, literally as they were peeling it away, we had all this kind of uh, um, methacellulose slime cut, cut to me and Paul behind him just pumping all this stuff coming out of him on cue. Turns out the team used another popular TV show for inspiration. We're all big fans of The Walking Dead here. We're always sort of scouring online looking at what they've been up to and what they're doing. But for us it was very important that we want to do something quite different as well. Turns out there's a scale for how dead a white looks. Well, we have super fresh whites, which come from Jane Walker's uh, makeup department, and they are extras, which is just like face uh, makeup and what have you paled down, and they pull out bone structure and a little bit of blood. And then our fresh whites have small cheekbone appliances where we can sink the eyes back a bit, and we say, oh, they're about six months old, dead. Um, <laughs> and then we're, we have sort of mid decomposed, which are heavier pieces. Top tip if you're using fake blood on somebody, don't use a wet wipe to wipe it off because you'll stain them orange as well. <laughs> Next time you're watching, keep an eye on the whites. This is a cast of Michael Birch, who has played various roles in, wait for it, 12 episodes, including that white that jumps out of the crate towards Cersei in season seven. He's played so many parts, he's been killed off so many times. <laughs> for battle sequences such as Battle of the Bastards, real life extras and horses are mixed in with loose fake limbs. It's also these limbs that are pinned to the wall, 
in the season eight, episode one scene with Lord Ned Upper. Thing, it's like, I mean, the life expectancy of these, if you make a load of props for a sequence, it's, it's rare you'll get them back and they'll be in a decent condition because they're usually covered in so much blood and mud and, and they're trampled on. That's like my arm hair, that's just human hair. What, what is this made out of? That's human hair. <gasps> oh! <laughs> So uh, we punch full heads of hair, we do eyebrows, eyelashes, um, and it is actually, it's natural hair uh, which is sold and uh, we bite in long lengths and uh, then the guys actually pre-curl it around small uh, lengths of dowling. And an arm um, with that amount of hair on would probably take about a day to punch. There are also entire trays of fake wounds. We had the frozen lake uh, sequence in um, season seven. 60 to 100 whites on a day and just usually the nature of just how nuts the filming process is and how crazy the battles are uh, we rarely had continuity days where we had to make sure this guy looked identical each day because he was, he was often going to be seen so we were able to just make things up as we went from day to day it's incredibly light and it's a bit uh, like just... jellyfish isn't it yeah it's just like holding it holding a jellyfish so what about all of those dead bodies we see they're made through a process called life casting. So we'll start with capturing a former of the actor's head or body and we'll use um, a silicon um, life casting material and uh, plaster bandage. So if, uh, if you see people with casts on their arms with the plaster bandage, we use that as an outer shell. Um, and then effectively we have a mould of their head um, which we can then pour in plaster of Paris to get a positive um, copy of the head. Yeah, these are all our sort of our ro rogues gallery of Game of Thrones sort of over the years. It's that Joffrey, it's obviously he starts you know bleeding out of his eyes and it goes the colour of radish. So that was a bit of a co collaboration between Jane uh, Walker and her team doing his makeup on the day and then it was visual effects as well, there's quite a lot in post sort of making his eyes a little bit off. We should probably qualify that the Aria head was made for her Walder Frey mask and the Hound came here for his makeup chest. But which adult size heads are underneath these bin bags? We're not allowed to see them yet. Hmm. Aging is also a process that is used for various characters. Remember that oh my god moment when Melisandre takes off her necklace in a season 6 premiere? We use, we use a lot of reference. I mean, um, old age makeups is something that's quite common in the prosthetic sort of world. So we, we've got so many books and books, so many files we've downloaded of um, elderly sort of skin and textures and what have you. We did a very exaggerated kind of sculpture and it was accentuating the nose, all the bone structure and what have you. And then we had to thin her hair, so she had a complete silicon ball cap. And then she had a double who, um, a really sweet elderly lady, um, I think her name was Sheila. And uh, she, uh, we shot a performance with her as well, walking from the bed. We shot her first and then Carice sort of matched her movements as well and visual effects kind of tied the two together. That's all we have time for. Our favourite bit? Probably the realistic limbs made with human hair. We won't be forgetting that anytime soon.